Hi, welcome to another patch tutorial. This time I want to show you how to make a patch like this. It's a little bit a mixture of a typical analog or virtual analog sound as the first layer and a second layer which is rather a typical digital sound. I will not say which two synthesizers analog and digital I had in mind when I programmed the sound because I'm sure that there are some people who would say that this sounds really do not sound like these two synthesizers but you may well notice which two I meant. Okay the sound seems to be quite simple but it is rather complicated because the second layer, the digital one, um, is only played for one-fourth of all notes. Listen to this again. <clears throat> so, the second layer is played randomly and just for in average every fourth note. So let's try to build a patch like this. Again we start with an initial sound. I will turn off the velocity. And we start with oscillator 2 because for the second layer I have to use the first oscillator which has a wavetable but this first layer which is analog or virtual analog uses typical analog um, waveforms which are available in oscillator 2 and 3 and of course also oscillator 1 but the wavetables are only available in oscillator 1 and 2 so for virtual layers I have to use oscillator 2 and 3. Okay, we start with a pulse which is well, very detuned I think with plus 18 and we are going to turn off the pitch band modulation so that when I use the pitch band like this you notice that oscillator will not move. I can turn off the first oscillator and use the pitch band again. There is no change. Okay. And Oscillator 3 is a saw and it also does not use the pitch band. The filter, we are going to use the filter 1 for oscillator 2 and 3. It is It has a cut, cut off of 47. Just a little bit of resonance to make the sound a little bit sweet. It's a low pass 24 type. It has a little bit of 
filter envelope modulation and 100% key track. And the filter envelope is like this. It has a little bit of attack, a little bit of decay. So we are going to have a, a modulation which um, sounds like like a flute with raising um, frequencies and then going back to the start position. And of course a lot of release, just like the decay. You can uh, choose the resonance just as you like it. You may hear that the resonance that the resonating frequency is moving up and low. This makes this wow the typical sound of a um, modulated filter. Okay, and the amp envelope just needs a little bit of release. This still sounds a bit boring, but now we are going to add some things. The LFO1 with a, a sine wave for uh, frequency modulation, adding a little bit of vibrato. And now we are going to use the pitch band for it. Here in the modifier 1 I choose the LFO1 as the first source and the pitch band as the second source and as a uh, combining operation I use the multiplication. So we are going to multiply LFO1 with the pitch band. When the pitch band is in the middle position, it is LFO1 times 0. If I have the pitch band in the upper position, I have LFO1 times 1. And if I move the pitch band to the lower position, I'm going to have LFO1 multiplied with minus 1. So that you shouldn't hear the difference because you can't really hear the difference of an LFO with a normal sine wave and the sine wave times minus one. So let's try it here in the first modulation slot. Modifier one. Modifying the pitch with plus 17. So no moving of the pitch band. Sounds like this. Pitch band up. A bit of vibrato. Pitch band down. Again, vibrato. Okay, and this is almost the first layer. It's sounding a bit analog, of course. But the analog synth I'm thinking of has a spring reverb. 
We are not going to use the effect 1, so we can turn it off. But we are going to use the effect slot 2, which has a reverb. And a lot of people say that the reverb within the Blofeld is not sounding sweet or nice, it's sounding quite metallic and artificial. And uh, this time, this character is exactly what we are looking for. And the settings are high pass of around 50. So we are, we are not going to have um, low frequencies to feed the reverb. Just a little bit of low pass. Uh, middle value for the diffusion no size so we are going to have a very short very metallic reverb shape character up to 127 decay of 80 and no damping now we're going to hear a very artificial spring reverb like uh, type of uh, effect <laughs> can just hear the reverb when we uh, turn, uh, turn up the mix. So this is the pure reverb. Typical spring reverb or plate reverb type of sound. Okay, and this is the first layer. And now the second layer. I said that the second layer is rather a digital sounding uh, layer for this patch and of course for digital things or digital sounds, we are always going to use the wavetables in the Blofeld. So oscillator 1 must be some nice wavetable. I'm going to choose wavetable 46, which is this one. I can turn off the other oscillators for a moment. We are also going to detune this thing a lot. This will be a nice effect together with the other two oscillators. One octave down. And we are going to use the filter 2 for this layer. The pulse width will be completely down to zero. We are going to modulate the wavetable position with the pulse width parameter in this case and modulate it by envelope 3 with an amount of 51. And we are going to use the brilliance parameter which adds a lot of digital dirt uh, to the wavetable. Without brilliance? With maximum brilliance. Very nice. Okay. And of course, also, no pitch bend. Okay, so we put oscillator 1 to filter 2 and oscillators 2 and 3 to filter 1. And filter 2 has the settings 
cut off 87 it is a low pass 12 dB type has no uh, filter envelope modulation again 100% key track and the modulation source has to be also envelope 3 of an amount of 56 and we can add a little bit of drive to give more punch to this layer so we are going to take a look on envelope 3 we have no attack decay of about 17 no uh, oh sorry this was of course the fr uh, the wrong envelope so now i changed the amplifier envelope actually but no problem of course you have to change the parameters of all other envelopes with these knobs and not with these ones maybe it's good that i did uh, this thing wrong so you can see what can happen if you use the blow field in a, in a wrong manner okay this time i'm going to make it right no attack decay of 70 no sustain and a little bit of release okay and we also need envelope 4 which is also an ADSR type again no attack again a little bit of decay no sustain and again a bit of release but more release than for envelope 4 and now we want to make this thing with uh, with the one fourth and three fourth thing, so that just in the average every fourth note will be played, and three fourth of all played notes will not play oscillator one. So how can we make this? We still have LFO. 2 and 3. If I choose the square type with the lowest possible speed, we are going to have an LFO which will alternate between the two values plus 1 and minus 1. And because we are not synced and not clocked and have a start phase 3, for every key hit, the LFO will be plus one or minus one exactly and randomly. So we can't say when uh, the LFO will have which value. It's completely random. And also the same uh, parameters for LFO3 speed 0 so that the LFO will mostly stay at this uh, at, at this value again start phase 3 and now we need the other modifiers so modifier 1 is for the pitch band and modifier 2 is for changing the value of LFO2 now we are going to make LFO2 as the first source, the value 0 as the second source, and we are going to use the maximum operator. So when LFO2 has the value 1, the calculation will be 1, 
0 and the maximum of these four values which is 1. And in the other case LFO2 will be minus 1 and the maximum value of minus 1 and 0 is 0. So modifier 2 will be plus 1 or 0 depending on which value is currently on LFO2. And we do the same thing for LFO3. Like this. And now in the fourth modifier we are going to use the values of modifier 2 and 3. and multiply them. So now modifier 2 can be plus 1 or 0 and the modifier 3 can be plus 1 or 0. You remember modifier 2 with LFO2 and modifier 3 with LFO3. So now we have four cases 0 and 0 then the multiplication will be also 0 1 and 0, then the multiplication will be also 0, 0 and 1, again 0, or 1 and 1. Just in this fourth case, the multiplication will be 1. And now with modifier 4, you can um, you, you get the value 1 for in the average every fourth note. And three fourths of all plate notes will have modifier four on the value zero. And with this type of modulation, you can get very creative um, results. You can, for instance, um, put a higher cutoff for every fourth note. Or you can um, change the attack for just one fourth of all plate notes. In this case, I want oscillator one to be played just in one fourth of all key hits. So now we are going to realize this. We turn off oscillator one, turn on again oscillator two and three. And modulation slot 2 will combine this modifier 4 with the level of oscillator 1. But I keep the amount to 0 because of modulation slot 3. Here we're going to use envelope 4 as a control for the uh, modulation amount of modulation 2. So modulation 2 will turn on and off the level of oscillator 1 and because envelope 4 is modulating the modulation 2 it will just press its um, envelope on the level of oscillator 1. But envelope 3 has to have some amount like 32 for instance and now we have this result. <laughs> So in the average every fourth note will have oscillator 1 on and all other notes won't have any oscillator 1. And now comes the reason why I didn't use the modulation wheel for the vibrato. It's because I want 
the modulation wheel as a control for the second layer. So we are modifying the level of oscillator 1 with a negative amount which is minus 37. Now when I raise the mod wheel I will add minus 37 to the value of the level of oscillator 1. So oscillator 1 will be for every fourth note plus 32 minus 37 is 0 in this case. You can't have negative uh, value for the level of course. So with the modulation wheel down I will have sometimes oscillator 1. <laughs> With the modulation wheel up, I will not hear um, oscillator 1 in any case. And now just a little bit of filter panning for filter 1 we choose LFO2 as the modulation source and for filter 2 we're going to choose envelope 4 as a modulation source with a positive amount of 53 and the normal panorama setting to minus 30 or left 30. Now we are going to hear for the second filter um, a panorama modulation which is just like envelope 4. So the sound will start on the right and then as long as the key is played the sound will move to the left. This is the whole sound. Now we can maybe add a little bit of arpeggiator let's say 105 BPM a note length of 1 8 yeah and a clock of 1 8 T Okay, I hope you liked this video, um, tell me what you think about it, share your thoughts with us, leave a comment, make a like or dislike, and yeah, thanks for watching and have a nice day.